all the way to paragraph 64 of that decision of the Court of Appeal. Yes. And you discover the following principles. At paragraph 52, the court acknowledged a prior judgment of the High Court in Judicial Service Commission versus the Speaker of the National Assembly. In which case, the High Court has had upheld the position that the Speaker of the National Assembly was a proper party to be sued where actions of the National Assembly were in issue. Equally, yes. the court in this judgment I've referred you to, the Speaker of the National Assembly versus the Center for Rights, Education, and Awareness, found that the speakers of the National Assembly and the Senate <coughs> were proper parties in a suit where a person was challenging the constitutionality of actions taken by either House of Parliament. Yes. Finally, the court acknowledged that pursuant to Rule 5 of the Mutunga Rules of 2013, yes. non joinder or misjoinder of parties could not defeat a constitutional petition. Yes. My Lord, I wish to close by saying this. Since the Speaker of the Senate was a party to this decision of the Court of Appeal, I beseech this court in its ruling to censor him for bringing this objection, knowing that the judiciary has given him prior guidance on this question. It is improper use of judicial time to invite us to respond to this kind of objection. Allow me to then invite my learned colleague, Mr. Elias Mutuma, to now proceed and do duty on the more substantive aspects of the application before me. Thank you, my lord, for discharging the proposal of orders is premised on that one ground that we have stood the wrong time. My learned senior having dispensed with that issue, that lot of motion, my lord, lacks merit and ought to be dispensed with. that guides a court that seeks to consider an application for conservatory orders, such as the one before you, have been established by our courts. Yes. All we need to demonstrate on behalf of the applicant is that she has a prima facie case. My Lord, secondly, the applicant is supposed to demonstrate that in the absence of conservatory orders, she is likely to suffer prejudice, irreparably. Yes. Thirdly, my lord, is that either the grant or denial of the conservatory orders yes. as a relief is going to enhance constitutional values and objects on a specific right as guaranteed by the constitution. In the Bill of Rights. Yes. Fourth is whether if conservatory orders are not granted, the petition is likely to be rendered negatory. Yes. And lastly, my Lord, is where does the public interest? lie in respect of the matter. 
Yes. Prima facie case, my lord, has been defined to mean that on the value, on the face value, the petitioner or the applicant has an arguable case. Not one that will succeed, but one that has the likelihood of succeeding on the value of it, on the face value of it, rather. Yes. As such, my lord, we do not need to go into the merits of the case. We do not need to converse the evidence. We do not want to bring witnesses at this juncture. All we need to show, my lord, is that there is one bit of likelihood of this matter succeeding. It is our submission, my lord, that not only do we have in the first case, we have one that has overwhelming chances of success. Yes. We have filed an affidavit in court. We have produced documentary evidence. We have tabled other material that demonstrates how strong the petitioner's case is. Therefore, my lord, what the court needs to satisfy itself is whether there is a cause of action. Yes. That it is being invited to interrogate and offer a relief call. A cause of action, my lord, is defined as where a party approaching the court claims that they have a specific right. Yes. There is an allegation that that right has been violated. There is an accusation that the respondent or the defendant is responsible for the violation. And as a result, the applicant has suffered or is likely to suffer loss. So then, what is the... Briefly then, my lord, without going in so much details of what the petitioner's case is about, we are here because the petitioner has been impeached through the exercise of a constitutional mandate by the respondent yes. in a process anchored under Article 181 of the Constitution as operationalized by Section 33 of the County Government Act. Section? 33 of the County Government Act, my lord. Yes. That having taken place, my lord, gives you jurisdiction under Article 165, specifically 165, 3B, and B, yes. that gives you the powers to determine whether a question relating to violation of a constitutional right <coughs> or whether that right under the Bill of Rights has been denied, violated, or infringed. Yes. And under D, whether anything said to have been done under the powers of this constitution was done in accordance with the constitution. Yes. Senate exercised its powers under those provisions of the law. And our client feels agreed. Our client feels that her rights were violated for the following reasons. One is that the impeachment proceedings proceeded in clear defiance of court orders. Yes. When you look at paragraph five of the affidavit found by Our Excellency the Governor. Yes.
at an extra km03 yes. she has produced a copy of the court's ruling in an order that prohibited the county assembly of Meru and by extension the senate from proceeding with the impeachment of the government. It has been argued, my lord, and it will be argued, yes. that that order did not apply to the specific motion of impeachment. Yes. We trust the court is able and capable of looking at that order and ruling and form an opinion on whether that order was specific to any motion or it was touching on the impeachment process as a whole. What is the petitioner's position? The petitioner's position, my lord, is that the Honorable Judge, Honorable Kassan, was very clear in his mind that what he was prohibiting was the impeachment process by whatever name, by whatever comment. At any stage, to allow him interrogate the various issues that had been raised in the petition. Yes. What the county assembly did and what the Senate failed to appreciate is the mischief that the court wanted to prevent. Yes. We submit that the proceedings at the Senate as forwarded from the County Assembly of Meru were analyzed for being in contravention of a very clear court order. Yes. Secondly, my lord, is that the petition has approached you and required you to exercise your powers under Article 165 yes. B <coughs> that gives you the powers to interpret any provision of the law and make a determination whether it is in contravention of the Constitution. Yes. My Lord, we will be urging you when you'll be sitting to hear the main petition yes. to consider the clearance section 33 or of the County Government Act as being unconstitutional for being in violation of Article 50 yes. 2 O of the Constitution. Why will we be asking that, my lord? For yes. one simple reason. The constitution is the grand norm. All other norms derive their validity from the grand norm. Yes. So section 33 ought to be in tandem, consistent with Article 52 of the Constitution. And that specific article, my lord, is very express that no person shall be tried for an offence that they have been previously tried of and either discharged or convicted of. Through our affidavits, my lord, and the material before you, yes. we are able to demonstrate that the governor of Meru County last year was dragged before a similar process Charges were labeled against her. The Senate found that those allegations had not been substantiated. She was acquitted. Yes. In the impugned notice of motion for impeachment that is before you today, yes. similar charges were brought against her verbatim. Yes. Yes. 
Senate failed to appreciate that bringing similar charges as those that were brought before them last year were in contravention of Article 52 of, of the Constitution. Yes. Now, my Lord, without then giving conservatory orders, to give you time to be able to interrogate that section, how will justice be served? That in itself is a prima facie case. Actually, more than prima facie case. Yes. yes, thank you, my Lord. I move on to the next issue. Thirdly, my Lord, is that again a clear reading of Article 51 of the Constitution is that every accused person has the right to have a dispute resolved by application of the law yes. by an independent and impartial tribunal. I'm talking about the right to fair hearing, my lord. It is our summation that yes. the proceedings at the Senate violated the petitioner's right to fair hearing in that the Senate was not impartial, in that the environment was not conducive for fair hearing, yes. that the decision of the Senate was predetermined, and therefore there could not have been justice by Senate which was acted, was supposed to be a neutral arbiter exercising Quasi judicial powers. <clears throat> At paragraph 37 to that 45 of the supplementary affidavit, the court will come across serious allegations of misconduct, violence, mayhem, and the count as the Senate, my lord, making it impossible for the petitioner to present her case and plead <coughs> for justice before Senate. It is yes. only fair, my lord, that this court is given an opportunity to interrogate what transpired at the Senate and whether the same could have afforded the petition a fair hearing. The only way to do that, my lord, is to issue conservatory orders before and the mission is made. Well, on that issue, my lord, you will notice yes. by looking at paragraph 10 of the affidavit that we have annexed 